Hello and welcome to DTWG, the prep welcome. Okay, in today's video, this is the introduction to inequalities and we're going to be solving these questions here and graphing them. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So if this is your first time on this channel, please, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends, family, loved ones preparing for the GED test. You can also check our website for free summary notes on sciences, your social studies, study guides, practice questions, your GED math formula sheets, all in our on our website, dtwgedprep.com. You can also join our Facebook group. Oh, wonderful community, 22,000 members. You know, you know, they make me proud every day. You just ask your question, be it looking for resources, knowing about the GED in your state, in whichever state you are, okay, in New York, be it Florida, any state you are, in whichever country you are, wanting to take the GED, wanting more information, ask your questions, and a lovely group of people would support you. You need motivation, anything you need on that group it's given it's given to you okay so you can join the group and also if you want one on one tutorial you can also contact me i tutor matt i tutor rla also your social studies and sciences all right thank you so now let's get on to the video inequality what does this show inequality shows the relationship between two unequal expressions we have done equations equations are two equal what expressions all right and one thing we should note is, you know, we have, um, these are the inequality symbols. This that points to your right is greater than, and this that points to your left is less than. This also that points to your right with an equal to sign is called, is called greater than or equal to. And this that points to your left with an equal to sign is called less than or equal to. Now, you should also note that the inequality symbol always points to the lesser, the smaller expression or lesser value. So, for example, if we have uh, uh, 6 and 17, your inequality sign would point to the lesser value because 9 is lesser than what? 17. The sign will point to the lesser value. Okay? All right. So, this is how uh, you should note about you know the inequality symbol if in case you're getting confused on how to you know place them the sign will always point to the lesser value in any way you want to interpret it as far as this pointed sign is facing this number it means this number is lesser than this okay whichever value is here all right so now we're going to solve all this now in solving inequalities, it's almost the same way as what solving equations, but there are some rules that you must, you know, put, take at heart, okay, which I'm going to be, um, you know, um, telling you as we go further. So as we solve, we're also going to graph them. So I'm teaching you two things, how to solve and also how to graph, because sometimes in the GED test, it will say solve and pick your answers. Your answers will be graphed on the number on the number line. So it means you must know how it is being graphed. Um, you know how uh, your solutions are graphed on the number line because everything your three op options will be drawn like this, and you know there will be some drawings on it. So it's for you now. After your solution, how do you graph it on the number line? So for the first question here, it says x plus six less than two. So we take our numbers here. In inequality, the number one rule in solving inequalities, okay, there's also a rule in solving compound inequalities, which is the next video after this, okay, but the number one rule is solid, solving pure single one inequality. For compound inequalities, you have two inequalities combined, but for just solving a single inequality, you always have to let your variable be on your left-hand side take your numbers to the right hand side. So we take, you know, in the equation, you can just, you know, go from left to right. It doesn't matter because it's an equal to sign. All right, but inequality is the shows relationship between two unequal expression. So your variables should stay on your left hand side. So we take six here, it becomes AX, all right, less than, taking a positive six here becomes a negative. So we have a two here, Taking positive becomes negative 6. So we have x less than 
2, that this is a positive 2 minus 6. A negative 6 will give us a negative 4. We subtract and the sign will take the sign of the bigger number. You still follow your rules of understanding sign numbers. It still applies here when adding or subtracting. So our answer here is what x is less than negative 4. How do we graph it? We go to where negative 4 is. We draw a circle. Now it says x less than. Our arrow would go this way. So a straight dark line. We go this way and we have it. So this is how we graph x is what less than negative 4. Okay, your circle would not be shaded. Sorry, it looks as if I was shading this. It would not be shaded, it would be empty. Okay, you circle right at the negative, the number negative four, and your arrow, since your inequality sign goes to the to the left, your arrow, your line will go to the left. Okay, so this is the solution, and this is how it is graphed. Now let's go to this. This says negative 13 less than negative 11 minus negative x. As I said, let our variables come to this side, our numbers to this side. Taking this negative x to this side, it gives us positive x greater than. We have here negative 11. Taking negative 13, it gives us what? Positive what? 13. Okay? So here we have x greater than negative 11, positive 13. We are going to subtract. So we have the 2. And what sign will it take to take a positive? Because 13 is bigger. So this is the positive 2. All right. So our circle will be here. And our sign goes this way, greater than. So x is greater than what? 2. Okay. Can you see that? So this is the way we graph this. Now let's go to number 3. Number 3 says x negative 5 greater than or equal to negative 3. Take negative 5 here, it becomes x greater than or equal to negative 3, uh, positive 5. So that's x greater than or equal to negative 3, positive 5, will give us a positive 2. So we have x greater than or equal to 2. So it's here, so let us symbolize this. So we have, we draw a circle and we shade it. Why do we shade it? Because this symbol here says x is greater than or equal to 2. So it can be equal to 2. That's why it's shaded. And our arrow will go this way. X greater than or equal to 2. So whenever you have the equal to sign, okay, the greater than or equal to sign, or the less than or equal to sign, the dots, the, the circle you draw here will be shaded. Okay. And, you know, you draw the line according to the arrow of your inequality symbol. Now, let's go to number four. Number four says 24 plus x less than or equal to 28. So we have x less than or equal to take 24 here. We have 28. Uh, taking po a positive 24, it becomes negative 24. So that's x less than or equal to 28 minus 24 will give us a positive 4. So x less than or equal to 4. So we come to where 4 is. We come to where 4 is. Since it is less than or equal to, it means we're going to shade our circle. Okay. And less than or equal to our arrow go this way. Do you see that? It will go this way. Okay. So this is our answer. This is how we graph this. Now look at number 5. Number five says 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to 7. I will take 3 here. So we have 2x greater than or equal to 7. Taking negative 3 here becomes positive 3. Okay, so we have 2x greater than or equal to, that will be 10. 7 plus 3, 10. Divide by 2, divide by 2. We have x greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so how do we graph this? So this is our 5 here. So it's going to be shaded since so it's greater than or equal to, and our arrow will go this way, right this way. Okay, so this is the solution, and this is how we graph them. All right, now let's go to number six. It says 4x plus 55 less than or equal to 17. So we have 4x taking positive 5 to this side, it becomes a negative. 
So we have a negative 5. We have 4x less than this 17 minus 5 will give us a 12 to get x we divide both sides by 4. Okay, that's x less than 12 divided by 4 will give us 3. So x less than 3. So it will be here. So since it's, it's just less than, there's no equal to, we just draw an empty non-shaded circle and our line will go this way. Okay? It goes straight this way. So x less than 3. Okay? So let's clear everything on the screen as we go to number 7. So number 7 says x plus 8 greater than 3x minus 4. So we bring x here, take 8 here. So we have x bringing uh, positive 3x here becomes a negative 3x greater than. Then we have negative 4 bringing positive 8 to this side gives us a negative 8. This is this x here means is a 1. Okay, there's an invisible 1 here. So that's a positive 1, negative 3. That will give us a negative 2x greater than. Negative 4, negative 8 will give us a negative 12. When you have two negative numbers, you add and the sign will be a negative. Now, in inequality, very important to note. When dividing, now, you know, we have to now divide by a negative number. Do you see that? When dividing by a negative number or multiplying by a negative number, your inequality sign changes to the opposite sign. So this is greater than, it becomes less than. I always tell my students I to do, please, before you write down your answer, change your sign because you might forget. When you write your answer, you might forget and write the same thing. Okay, so before you, you know, you cancel and write your X, change your sign first. All right, so you change your sign to the opposite sign. And here, this negative cancels this negative and 12 divided by 2 is a 6. Do you see that? So, you know, let's say 6 is somewhere here. Then you draw your answer on the graph. It gives you this, okay? This will be your answer on the number line. This is the way you graph. You will shade this because this is just less than alone. Now, number eight says negative eight, negative x, in, uh, uh, less than or equal to 5x minus, in parentheses, 4x uh, plus 6. Now, Let's deal this parenthesis. Okay, you know, even in order of operation, the parenthesis, we deal with them first. So look at this parenthesis. There's a negative sign outside this parenthesis. So we have to use this negative sign to multiply everything in here. So a negative times this positive 4x will give us a negative 4x. And a negative times this positive 6 will give us a negative 6. Do you see that? Now let's combine like terms. Let's take all the numbers with the variables here and just the numbers alone here. So here we have, here we have negative X. Bringing this guy here becomes a negative five X. Bringing this guy here becomes a positive four X. Less than or equal to, we have left here negative six. I remember by taking this number here, when it comes here, it becomes a positive eight. Okay, as anything crosses the, the sign, the, the, uh, the symbol, the inequality symbol, same as the equation symbol, their signs changes, okay? That's, you know, we are crossing to combine the like terms together. So now, we have a negative, this x means we have an invisible one here. So it's a negative one, negative five x. That will give us a negative six x, okay, plus four x, all right? less than or equal to a negative six plus eight will give us a positive two. Now we have a negative eight X and a negative six X plus four X. That will give us a negative two X. You subtract and the sign of the bigger number it takes less than or equal to two. So we are dividing by a negative number. It means now this sign will change to the opposite sign. Write it first before you go further. Okay, divide by negative. So this cancels. We have x2 divided by negative 2 will give us a negative 1. 
you know, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and you have a negative. Remember, when a positive number divides the negative number, your answer will take a negative. So we have here x is what? Greater than negative 1. So, you know, since it's greater than or equal to, we shade our circle, will be shaded. So greater than or equal, equal to negative 1, then our line will go this way on the number line. All right, you know, there are several ways, um, you know, each country's or tutors represent graph um, their number line. The GED does it this way. There, in, there, are, there are some places that, uh, you know, they draw it up. You see it up here. <clears throat> Let, let's say the answer is negative four, for instance. You, um, a line will be, you know, protruded here, then our, circle symbol would be drawn here then our arrow sign will go this way then if it's if it's a, a greater than or equal to symbol we shade it this way as in some textbooks you see it this way when the gd it is this way on the number line on the graph itself your line is drawn okay so it's not extended this way okay so now let's go to number nine number nine here says four y over three, I just I thought to mention this in case you see something like this, you know, in another textbook, it's done this way and in some other textbook, it's done this way. That's why I mentioned this. All right. So here we have eight Y minus 20. All right. So this is a fraction. Remember in fractions, this doesn't have a fraction. So to cancel out this fraction here, what we do is we multiply both sides by three. So times three here, times all this also times three. So it means this three will cancel out this fraction here. So we're left with four y greater than, okay? So greater than, let's just put this three parentheses, eight y minus 20. So let's open up this parentheses. So we have four y greater than three times this, that's 24 y, and three times negative 20, that's negative 60. Right now, let's combine like terms. Let's take 24 here. Okay, so we have 4y taking 24 here becomes a negative 24y greater than negative 60. This is a negative 60. Don't leave out the negative there. The sign of 60 here is negative. Remember in math, the sign of a number is always that in front of it. The sign of 24 is positive. That's why when we crossed over, it became a negative. So we have here a positive 4 uh, minus uh, negative 24. So we're going to subtract. So we have 20y and the sign will take a negative. So greater than negative 60. So we divide by negative 20. Since we're dividing by a negative number, our sign changes to the opposite sign. This cancels out. We have y and here... Uh, 60 divided by 20 is 3. You have a negative and negative. This will cancel out to be positive. So we have positive 3, I mean. Okay, so y is what? Less than positive 3. So we're going to have our answer here on, on our graph. So we're going to have a non-shaded circle and it will go this way. Okay, so that's the answer for that. Now let's solve number 10. Let me clean this space up. Okay. So we have y minus 2 less than 2y plus 6 over 4. Okay. So we have a fraction here. We have to cancel it out. So to do that, we'll multiply by 4. So we'll multiply both sides by 4. Multiply this also by 4. That's everything here by 4. So this 4 would cancel out this fraction here. So we're left with 2y plus 6. And here we're left with 4 in parentheses y minus 2. Okay, so we open the parentheses to solve. So 4 times y, that's 4y. Then also, if there was a fraction here, I'm sorry I didn't give a question. If there was a fraction here, all you need to do is look for the LCM of both, then multiply by both sides. So it cancels out. 
okay, you use the LCM to multiply. I've done this in equations. It's also the same logic that you apply here, all right? So, and watching equations video is prerequisite to, to watching inequalities because if you don't get equations, you won't be able to get inequalities. So when you do that, you'll be able to understand this, right? So we have four Y, then four times negative two, that's a negative eight, less than, we have two Y plus six. So let's group, bring two Y here, take the numbers here. So we have four Y, bringing the positive two Y here becomes a negative two Y less than, we have a positive six here, so bringing a negative eight here becomes a positive eight. This minus this gives us a two y. This plus this gives us what? A 14 we divide by two, divide by two. We have y is less than seven. Okay, so let's say for, for instance, this is seven. So y less than seven, we draw a circle here that's not shaded and it will go this way. Y less than seven. All right, so thank you, thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you so much. Please could you give this video a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones preparing for the GED. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel, okay, to help us grow. And uh, check our website it's for summary notes, our website, dtwgedprep.com. For summary notes, study guides, practice questions, the GED math formula sheet, okay. And... Uh, you can also join our Facebook group. You can The links will be in the video description box of this video. Also, you can contact me. I'll leave my email in the video description box of this video. If you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I can do that for you. And uh, you can also join the, uh, the course, the GED course on the website or on the website. Anyway, I'm going to announce it when it's fully ready on the website. I will announce it on this YouTube channel. So thank you, thank you. And finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ. For he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last and give us peace on earth. All right? And, you know, peace from every troubles, every battles. Give us victory. Of, uh, you know, in any, any of our challenges we're facing through, going through, marital, be it, uh, you know, financial, he's going to give us victory. Okay? So everything is in Christ Jesus. Please come unto him today. And he will give you rest. Cast all your burdens. You don't need to carry them all around. It's going to make you weak. It's going to make you lose strength, lose your joy. Give it to Jesus and he will give you joy and strength. Okay, for in joy we find strength. Anything stealing your joy, Jesus will give it to you back. All right, so give everything to Him and He would take the lead, take all those your burdens from you. Okay, and give you peace. And most importantly, heaven at last. For well, there is life after death. All right, so thank you, thank you. I wish you success in your GED test and also in life. You are destined to win. See you in our next video.